All right. There we go. So this is just an overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to go into like some specifics of like interactions with the kids. Um, and then if we have time, we'll like spend a little time just talking, zooming out a little bit about just like the mindset of being at ZigZag. Uh, so the first thing is just about uh, the culture creation. That's like, you know, the mostly what I think of us as being about at ZigZag. So um, Hanny, you wanna start? Yeah, so just, just highlighting some of what we mean by, by culture really. Um, um, there's this idea of, of, of power with, meaning like we are, we pay attention to kind of what the power dynamics are if somebody is uh, is getting their needs met at the expense of someone else. This is like a, a flag that this is that power is is not happening. Uh, so that's something we kind of keep an eye on in terms of the dynamics in, in the space. Um, uh, another one is that it's a piece of yes. Uh, so, you know, whatever the kids are interested in doing, wanting to do, um, if it, if you think it's, there's some, something about it that doesn't look right, doesn't look safe or, you know, whatever it is, just try to reframe that into, you know, what it is they can do. Um, consent, that is, um, you know, just basically that's just the mindset of like, okay, kids are, um, in control of their time. Uh, we want them to check in with themselves around like if they're hungry, um, if they need to go to the bathroom, you know, if they want to play a game or not. Um, so all those things are just a big part of like just reminding kids that they're at choice. And uh, inclusion and awareness of bias. So, so we basically, um, you know, have clarity that part, we, we do live in a power over culture where there's uh, really kind of like groupings of people that kind of, you know, feel um, like, um, and, and, and one of the things we emphasize is, is inclusion. So considering everybody um, that's in the space equally and, you know, aware that we have some biases and, and trying to mitigate that. And related to that is the gender and uh, neurodiversity and BIPOC. So these are kinds of like uh, societal kind of built-in biases that we all come with. And uh, we're just, just being aware that those are things we carry, the kids might carry in the space and, and kind of making sure that um, we're do we don't play the same script, basically. We kind of were here to change the pattern and create a new culture that, um, that uh, includes all of these groups. And of course, central to our culture is just the kids are free to learn sexually. Um, and this is how they get to know themselves and what they like and their passions and their purpose and how they develop competence. And a big part of that too is having an environment where they can learn things without feeling, um, you know, they're going to be shamed by the adults around them or other kids. Um, and then uh, part of this emphasis on freedom, it's always important to also talk about um, the responsibility because it's not like freedom to do whatever you want. It's, um, it's we're all responsible to um, each other and we're learning in community. So just um, bringing awareness to that, any community agreements we have, you know, as an adult in the space, like you, um, yeah, just like being aware of those agreements yourself and, and bringing the attention um, of those to other kids. Go ahead. Right. So, um, so conflict resolution is really a big part of what what we do as facilitators, and you know, um, and it, it, they're they're really related very much to this power with idea. So, um, when we say power is, what we really mean is everyone's needs matter, and it's very important um, that we can have different behaviors, we can have different expressions of trying to get our needs met, but really underneath all of that is the actual need. So when we go back and focus on the need as much as we can, um, that kind of equalizes the playing field. So it really makes it, um, you know, it's not about who's right and who's wrong, who did something or didn't do something or whether they yelled or they didn't yell or all of that gets equalized when we keep reminding ourselves and reminding the kids 
to go back to what's underneath all of that is like, you have a need, you have a need, and they all matter, right? That's, that's what kind of changes the direction of the conversation and gets us to really do conflict resolution in a, in a way that actually uh, makes sense, not, not just responding to the behavior that's happening. And, you know, I have some examples on here of just kind of like specific things that we do with kids because, you know, this is just a very common thing. If kids are taking or you know, snatching something from someone's hand um, or yelling, it's a common refrain with the younger kids is, okay, let's stop and talk about it. Um, and it's usually pretty simple with the younger kids as far as like just making an observation of the need. Okay, you know, Azalea, you want to play with this toy and Everett. Um, you also want to play with that toy. What can we do about that? So, so we might not get there right away, especially with younger kids. There's a lot of, and we're going to talk a little bit about like emotional regulation and kind of like slowing down and all that. So we, we, we deal with feelings first, uh, but then really as soon as we can, we try to get to this, to this part of, um, you know, yeah, let's just, just stop and pause and that's how we're going to transition. Yeah. And that is the, the youngest kids, I feel like it's really usually very quick as far as like they, as soon as they just had a second to stop, they come up with something really creative. Um, and, you know, they usually just do that by themselves. Um, and hitting, you know, it's a little bit different. I mean, one thing that's important to remember, I guess, if you see it, one kid hit another kid is to give attention to the kid that's been hurt. Because um, sometimes our default is to say something to the kid that just hit. Um, but just like, okay, let's show some care for the kid that just heard, like, oh, no, you know, like, something about how they feel, and how you really want to feel safe, and um, having, helping them maybe express that to the other kid, if it's something that's not, like, really aggressive, you know, something that you can deal with. If some, if, if a kid is really dysregulated, um, sometimes you just, you know, you have to know the kid, of course, but um, sometimes it's, it's support, they want to be held, or, or maybe you actually need to physically, like, hold their arms back from hitting another kid. Um, and we do that protectively, um, but you know, that, that's not as common, but sometimes just like being in tune with kids, if they need to have a little space before they talk or if they need some support with an adult, um, you know, hugging them or whatever. Um, exclusion is something that comes up too with the little ones. Um, and usually it's just trying to address like whatever need. And again, you know, just having a conversation. Um, and, uh, one example, I guess, with that was just for some kids that were wanting a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and not really, and really excluding some other kids that were wanting to join, we would suggest like doing play dates. So that worked to resolve one situation um, we have where they had one-on-one -on -one play dates after zigzag and zigzag was more for doing things together. Um, and then of course, just focusing on prevention. So part of the role, you know, is just like being tuned in to like, okay, maybe like we ought to check in to see if we're hungry. Uh, maybe we need to have a little downtime and, you know, do some drawing, like maybe you just need some, some connection, like just um, those sorts of things are just, uh, you know, you can just always have your mind going about what might um, go on. Yeah, yeah, like what, what hasn't happened in a while or the lunch time. What or... needs might be up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so with with older kids, um, the the focus is really on kind of slowing down um, a little bit and listening and making observations. And um, kids are are not probably going to be able to get to the bottom of their needs very quickly, especially in the beginning. And um, so so our role is oftentimes guessing what the needs are. So um, checking in and saying, you know, is it, do you think this is what's going on for you? And you can try a couple of things. And you know, once they say yes, that's it. You've identified the needs. That really helps frame the conversation. It's cool of the, the change up meeting is just think about that too for things that like keep coming up. That's when you really want to like be like, okay, well, maybe this is something we want to address in a change up meeting. Um, and yeah, I mean, we'll you'll get to know more about what those look like as we do them, but just to have that put that out there too. Okay, so we 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 keep track of of, of patterns a little bit too, uh, especially in the beginning. So you know, if 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 a conflict keeps happening in in the same way, then that's what you know requires more en engagement and more like long term solution. Um, if it's one off things, it, it's it's a different kind of response. Um, feelings so. Just, you know, all feelings are 
welcome, good. It's, there's a lot of um, that can come up um, when you're around a lot of other kids. And, you know, being um, like learning to self-regulate, learning to, to co-regulate with another person or another kid, or an adult usually, um, those are all really great. Um, and also just want to bring awareness to the dysregulation is totally fine too. This is like, we all need to practice being dysregulated and bringing ourselves back um, into a good balanced state again. And all three are important and all three are gonna be part of what kids are practicing, you know, is just living their lives. Um, the, the second bullet point is about something that, uh, that the grownups do um, and a lot, and that I, I'm, I still do it too. So it's, it's, it's this, now uh, we have something in us that really cares a lot about what other adults think of how we, we are doing things with kids. Uh, so we call it adult phase. It, it really, and, and we respond to the kid with the awareness that there are other adults in the room and we want to be seen or known to do things in a certain way. Um, and so so just, just be aware of that. It's right. natural. Or sometimes it's like you might think like um, you might feel totally comfortable with a, with a kid having their big feelings. But if there's an, another adult there, especially if it's your own kid, I think we do this, um, then it doesn't suddenly doesn't feel as OK. And just so just trying to like, you know, we just support each other in community that we all know this is a thing that we do. And, you know, we're all trying to like do better. <clears throat> oh, and then this is the other thing is like yeah. if when kids are having big feelings. Um, we also want to, you know, balance that with the needs of the kids who are doing the activity. So if there is something going on for one kid, you know, like we'll probably talk about this with the kids too as well, but just like, let's take some space. Let's get away from the group. You know, let's do something else um, and not just stay there where the other kids can't continue on. So just trying to keep that in mind too, that balance of like, um, of needs. And if you need uh, help from another group, we're gonna have walkie talkies and all that. So if you need help for another grown up to help you take a kid away so you can continue with what you're doing with the rest of the kids, that's totally uh, gonna happen, you know, and, and you're, you know, everybody's welcome to do that. Uh, Chelsea has a good point about the change of uh, meetings. Um, it, they don't all have to in include everyone. They could really be a change up between a couple of people or three people or whatever. It could be whatever scale we want they want it to be. So thanks, Chelsea. Yeah. Um, this is just some detail stuff. So we'll have like a cleanup at the end of the day around three o'clock. We actually end at 3.30. So we'll have like cleanup and then, a, you know, like a closing circle thing. Um, but just in addition to that, um, we just wanted to bring awareness to the, the games because um, the games often the kids have always loved playing with the games pieces as toys. And we end up just those games end up just not being playable after a while. Um, so we would like to kind of change what we're doing around that um, and really not use the games as toys um, and just put them back in the box, you know, when they're done. Um, and then with the little kids too, the dumping is um, something that they like to do. Either they just want to go into a room and dump everything or they're looking for something in one box and they just dump everything out and leave it. So just bringing awareness to delight the little ones and like, okay, well, that's fine if you're going to uh, get a toy out, but let's put them all back up. So, you know, it's not in the way of the other kids or whatever, but just like, um, you know, I try not to like keep my eye on the kids that are kind of going and just like bringing out a lot of stuff <laughs> without, without really, you know, um, and, and without a lot of purpose. You'll, you'll get to know the kids too. It, it tends to be um, certain kids. And so if you kind of anticipate it, you can, right. you can, you know, help them if they're going yeah. to a box. To get and I guess want, I usually, so. you know, just talk, I do like some prevention with that. Like, okay, if you want to like dump this out, just, you know, just, it's going to be your responsibility. Do you agree? You know, I try to get their agreement ahead of time. Like, okay, just do you agree to put these back in there? Um, or now I'll help you do it. But like, just bringing some more attention to that. Um, and then just this, this is just kind of like a mantra we have with the little ones too, just to be gentle with people and things. Um, so um, emphasis on like owning the space uh, that we share. And, uh, and if you clutter it, so, so multiple, things to play with are, are totally welcome. I, I love that kids bring different things and um, create create new play um, space and play ideas with them. Um, it's just that sometimes it gets to the point where it interferes with other people, other kids wanting to play. So if it starts looking like it's cluttering up the space, 
you know, kids are falling over toys and on the floor, that's the time to kind of remind to like, let's declutter the space and make room for, for other games to happen. Um, you know, create that invitation and see where that goes. All right, so this is just a general thing. Um, I'm not gonna read that big quote or anything, but you know, just our role basically as play workers or facilitators and tools in the space is to be an intelligent observer. Um, you know, take your cues from the kids as far as like what other um, ways to like just enrich the environment. Um, you know, like our role is to be attentive, supportive, but not like hovering. Um, and um, another thing, just basic, um, I don't know, thing that a play worker I think that I think about is the risk benefit ass benefit assessment is like always going on in terms of um, what kids are doing. Um, you know, sometimes we have a lot of fears that like if you check in with yourself, you're like, well, actually maybe that's okay, but maybe you want to ask a question. Like, well, do you feel like you have good balance doing that? Um, instead of just kind of being like, ah, be careful, you know, but like, it's fine if you feel some tension around what some kids are doing to express that, but just try to be like, you know, constructive, and I guess. Specific, specific. To what, what it is that you're noticing. And so maybe take a little bit of a, of a moment to think about it and then come up with something specific and, you know, check in. And if, it, if of course, if you think it's unsafe, you can say that and you can say the reason for it. Um, and we uh, we are we again what Kelly said about like we're we're observers and attentive but we're not in in, in their face, um, you know we the, we interject when we see and this imbalance of power so if someone's needs not being met so you know if somebody is being pushed around or bullied or if someone is being uh, not considered or excluded or all these things these are opportunities for us to step in and do the culture creation again like and and with curiosity and with reminders and with um again going back to uh what do you think the needs are the person that's doing that is not doing anything wrong they pro probably have a need that they have and so let's figure out a way to meet it without uh without whatever the, the our dynamic uh, that's going on is um See, Tulsi is just saying expressing your feelings about what they are doing versus their ability to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Laura was just saying you want to have like a mini conversation about um, how there may be, it's true, there may be more kids that are dysregulated, um, just having not had a lot of time around other kids. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, just due to the pandemic. And yeah, so we can definitely talk more about that, Laura. That sounds like a great conversation. All right. Um, all right. So, all right. So, just to kind of like um, back back out a little bit to just our general like um, agile learning <laughs> fundamentals of you know people learn best by making the, their own decisions and children are people. So, um, I think one of the things that's really come up for me about this lately too is just like kids are like like they have a right to just enjoy their lives. Like this is their childhood. Like this is the only childhood they get. Like let's, um, it's not about just always preparing for the future. You know, it's about what they're, what they're in doing now. How are they enjoying their life now? Um, and, you know, as part of that, like, you know, their, their way of learning and, and we want their learning to be joyful and, um, you know, what they're doing they're we're discussing with them. We're brainstorming with them about, um, you know, their day and what they might want to do that day. And we're not trying to course them. Um, and just like, this is this process of building um, like a sense of confidence. Um, so that's just, did you have anything else to add? Okay. Um, and then another one, learning is natural and it's happening all the time. So, so we're not, um, it isn't like, oh, let's go learn and then we stop learning and go play or do something else. Or, it's um, learning is so integrated into life. So, so and, not being uh, kind of having tension or whatever when we don't think learning is happening because it is. And play is play is not just a relief from learning. It's it is learning. <laughs> is is how we view it. Um, and then that does also mean doesn't mean that we never offer a curriculum or some sort of construction. Of course, we do uh, whenever it makes sense, whenever the kids want it. Um, and uh, this is also just this not trying to be clever. I think this comes up um, a lot with like your, um, 
you know, this isn't like some, this, this philosophy, it's for real. Like, we're not really just like, okay, we're going to give kids the illusion of control and autonomy, but really we're going to have them being doing these certain things because that's really what we know they should be doing. Um, you know, we're not trying to be clever about it. It's like genuinely, it's okay. <laughs> and, and it's not easy all the time. And, um, and that's okay too. It's just, those are the reminders to what we go back to is like we, if we have some tension around it, we still keep going back to reminding ourselves that, you know, they're living their lives and we're supporting them live their lives. So um, we, we don't have a determined outcomes that we want uh, to push them into. Um, and then this is just, this is a really deep one, it's a really big one. Um, I imagine we're gonna be talking about this a lot in our support groups, um, but it's just this, this is the fundamentals of, you know, that we're trying to do something that's based in trust and not in fear. Um, and, you know, we're all used to um, a fear-based <laughs> model, really, because we've all grown up, most of us, um, in a school system where a lot of it is, you know, it's top-down learning, it's punishment and reward, it's that white dominance culture, um, it's competition, it's comparison, it's, you know. Yeah, I want to say beyond school, I think it's not um, some true, of us, have, we true. all have been uh, indoctrinated in this model outside of whether we went to school or not, our daily interactions are government, everything, so, yeah. So, yeah, so trying to come out of that, like this idea that, you know, particularly that of trusting kids that they know what's good for their own lives. They know, um, you know, like they're actually an expert on themselves and that actually intrinsic motivation, self-determination, the second point here is self-determination theory. This is like, um, that actually self, int like intrinsic motivation comes from having a sense of autonomy, a sense of competence and a sense of relatedness, connection. And, and that we are offering in our trust-based model. Um, and that is um, what can happen. That is what's happening. And um, when we move away from that fear-based um, ideas of education and of living life and being more partnered with our kids. Um, and, and just at the bottom, I just have like, you know, this is just a process of like de-schooling. It's like, it's always happening. It's always going on of noticing these things in yourself. You know, when something comes up, um, like, you know, checking in first because it's check in, see what needs you have, um, see what it's about. You know, are you having some healthy concern for the kid or is this maybe about the adult gaze thing? Is that coming back into play? Um, it can be, can be many different things. Um, so, so what, what, what I, I think is through doing this all these years, it, whatever it is that I'm um, stressed about tends to be about not me. And so like resolving that before, you know, as much as possible before engaging with the kids usually creates a lot more space to options and to and things, other things that I might have not have thought of right away. Yes, and as facilitators or adults in the space, as play workers, we all are, can be there for each other. So this has definitely happened where, you know, I've had another facilitator in the space come up to me and like, you know, I just need to vent for a few minutes about this kid and what just happened in order for them to feel like they're in a place to go back and actually handle it and then, you know, with some compassion and all of that. And, and we can ask for the other person to step in and switch roles too. So if we're doing something and we just have, you get know, triggered, then we'll get triggered, we yeah. can switch and ask the other facilitator to come in and, and take over for, for a while. Yeah. So that's... Right. And then this is just uh, resources. Um, I'll just point out, I think this unschooled book by Carrie McDonald is a really good one for um, anybody who's like new to this kind of way of living and learning. Um, the free to learn is also a pretty good one for um, folks that are new to it. Um, how to talk to your, so your kids will listen is more about kind of like specific examples with like conversations with your kids. So it's really good if you feel like you're, you're particularly struggling around um, just like, you know, not really coming up with having good productive conversations with your kids. Um, that one is really great. It's kind of from like that NVC compassionate communication perspective. Um, and then some of these other ones, I, uh, let's see, raising free people, white fragility, my grandmother's hands, those are all, um, well, white fragility, my grandmother's hands are more about, um, you know, just seeing our own biases and being aware of those and, and learning how to do better with that. Um, 
uh, Raising Free People is just a really good book about um, this one particular family's experience of becoming unschoolers. Um, and she also has a podcast that's really great called Fair the Free Child. And I also have her TED talk on here. Obviously, I really like her. Um, and then on Tigering, I haven't read that one, but Chelsea recommended it. Um, and I just looked over it. I heard a podcast by that one too, and it seems really awesome. Um, yeah, and then The Self-Driven Child, that one is pretty cool because it's just a lot of science. Um, if you're into that. Uh, I have Mr. Chaz on here for TikTok. This, this is like, I just <laughs> discovered him and I think he's pretty great. He does like these one minute videos just about like, um, all topics related to being like more respectful towards kids and you know how to view like their emotions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's enough for me to, about that. All right, cool. Okay. So we'll stop recording and then uh, have a conversation yeah. with some questions. All right, okay. let me figure out where the stop is.